Hello viewers and welcome back. Today I got here the Can-Am Commander and I'm going to be installing the Can-Am Snorkel Kit. Here we go. Here is everything that comes in the kit. It's going to be a little bit of an install. Let's get to it. If you'd like the paper instructions, just go to Google, type in BRP instructions, click the top link in the bar here, type in your part number. and then click the link that applies to your machine. Here are the paper instructions to print out if you need. The first thing I need to do is remove the inlet hoses and the exhaust hose, those two there and that one there for the CVT. And then I'll remove the grill right here. Then I'll need to remove the air intake hose right there and the air intake grill and the service cover there. To make the job a little easier, I have removed the box. Simply take out the two bolts here on either side and then pull the pin and lift the box off. Next, I'm going to take these two caps here and cap off the holes for our CVT air intake that we removed. Now I can install the new grill cover provided in the kit. Now I'm going to cap off the intake and install the new grill as well. The next thing I'm going to do is pull off this duct valve here and replace it with the cap and clamp provided in the kit. Next, I'm going to install either the P6 or the P7 onto the airbox. The P6 is for the 800 and 1000 model and the P7 is for the 1000R model. If you're having troubles figuring out which is which, there is a part number on the piece of rubber and check the directions under the list of parts to figure out which is which. I'm gonna use one of the clamps we took off earlier. Now I'm going to install the next piece of the air intake, but first I'm going to have to push out this cap right here from the bottom. And I'll use a clamp provided in the kit.
I've gone ahead and connected the P11 flex hose to the P12 front cooling duct for the CVT. It said to use a previously removed clamp, but there's nothing that fits on there. So I had to do some hunting around the shop and find one that worked. Next, I'm gonna install our new outlet onto the front bottom of the CVT. You can see here in the picture where it's going to end up. This is the exhaust, this is the intake. I'm also going to remove this top cover here, the same as the other side, by pushing it up from the bottom. It is quite a tight fit, so to make it a little easier, I took off the rear wheel. Next, I'm gonna to fit together P19 with P18 using a previously removed clamp. I'm also gonna to fit together P17 with P16 with another clamp. For the 1000R model, I'll have to attach P14 to P15 with another clamp I found around the shop. Now we need to tie together the three ducts. As you can see, I got the new CVT exhaust duct on top with a clamp holding it down there and around here, I've had to go ahead and use some zip ties because once again, they did not provide me with the proper size clamp. Take a good look. It can be a little confusing on how to align these. Here you can see there's a notch and there's also a notch on that duck. Those notches line up in the rubber. The zip ties will probably be fine, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace it with a proper clamp as soon as I get a hold of one. Okay. Now I can install this big mess of ducts here onto the CVT. This one here will go onto the front and this one will go on the side of the secondary. Before you attach any of the ducts, make sure you feed them upwards through their proper holes on the top and then attach them to the bottom and tighten up the clamps. Here you can see how I got everything installed. Make sure all your clamps are tight. Make sure those tabs there on all the pipes are above the plastic so they lock in place. That goes for the intake side as well. Remember that all these clamps are not the same size and it does matter where you put each of them. Down here I have a 7080 and up here I have an 80 100. On all these bigger ducts here, I have a 90 110. Down here, I had to find a different one in the shop. I believe it was a 65 80. There are a few clamps that they do not provide you with in the kit, so I did have to find a few to make everything work. On this one, you can see it is an 80 110. Wherever you can, use the bigger. 90 110 clamps and use the medium and small clamps where they are needed. The directions do not tell you which clamp goes where. Now I'm going to reach around to the front side of the ducts and install a plastic plug holding the two ducts together. Now 
Next, I'm going to take out this service cover here. First, I'm going to have to take out the plugs. There are two back here, one up here, and two on this side here. Now I can take out the plastic plugs around the outside of this panel. To make it easier, I'm going to remove the driver's seat frame. Now that I have the cover off, I need to remove that tiny little hose right there, coming off the bottom of the water pump. Here's the tiny little hose that came off the bottom of the water pump. And I'm gonna replace it with this one here that was provided in the kit and feed it upwards towards the air filter. Here's the new hose that I fed up from the water pump behind our new air duct and into the sidewall right here. Next, I need to remove the fuel line vent hose. I'm gonna disconnect it from right there on that fitting and pull it out the top here. And here I have the fuel tank vent line all set up. I have 720 mils going to the Y, 70 mils going to the one-way check valve. You wanna make sure the one-way check valve only allows air to go that way and not back into the tank. Another 70 mils into the filter and another 70 mils that will attach to the machine. I have 310 mils going down to the one-way check valve and four 100 mils down here. If all of that sounded very confusing, just go to your instructions and follow the chart here. I've gone ahead and routed the hose. I hooked the end with the filter here up right beside the water line. I then ran it down behind the air box and I hooked the long end with the 720 mil up to the top of the fuel tank. The other end here coming off the Y with our relief valve feeds down into the frame where the original breather came from. Now I'm gonna assemble the intake outlets. I've already done one here. First, I'm gonna put on the top piece of the plastic, shove in the grills and put the center piece in. Now that I got the intakes assembled, I just need to shove them down onto the machine and we're pretty much done here. If you're having a little trouble sliding them down, I like to use a little bit of WD around the edge and then they'll slide right on.
And there we go, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Go around and double check all your clamps, make sure they're tight, make sure there's some zip ties on your fuel line breather hose there, and then reinstall anything previously removed. And there we go, we're pretty much all done. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click up here to check out the next video. This has been my snorkel kit install on the Can-Am Commander 1000R. Ride safe.